What's happening guys, my name is Anthony and in today's video I thought I'd help you guys choose the best wheel based on your budget and platform for F122. So let's just get straight into this video. And I'd like to thank everybody who's on the screen right now for being channel members. If you do want to support the content past just liking and subscribing, make sure to click the join button underneath the video to learn more. So yeah, this video isn't really going to be very scripted. It's just me going off of the cuff right now, but I hope that this video is going to be informative for you guys when it comes to choosing your first will, depending on needs and budget. So let's get straight into this one. And as you can see, we are going to be starting off with PlayStation. I want to do three categories, which you'll see in the uh, player. It will be split up into three different categories. We'll be doing PlayStation. We'll be doing um, obviously Xbox and then we'll be doing PC as well. PC coming with more options since there are more companies building wheels, especially direct drives for PC players. So starting off with PlayStation, we're going to be starting off with Thrustmaster. The reason why I'm not starting off with Logitech or going to be mentioning Logitech too much in this uh, video is just because to be honest with you guys, I just can't recommend Logitech, especially with the price that I've seen it out on their website. Maybe you could find it cheaper. And if you can, then yeah, sure. Get the Logitech as it is one of the cheaper wheels to get your feet wet. Uh, but as we take a look right here on Logitech's own website, the G923 and the G920 are they're, they're both around 300 quid, um, which to be honest, in my opinion, is way too expensive for these type of wheels just due to the fact that their quality isn't as good as one of the wheels that I'm going to be recommending on Thrustmaster and yet it's roughly the same price. So that's just my personal opinion, obviously, uh, but do your own research when it comes to it. I just think that, you know, with a Logitech, if you can find it for cheaper, then definitely get the Logitech. But if you can't find it for cheaper and this is the only price you can see it at, wouldn't really recommend it. So with the Thrustmaster, you have two options. You can get the new T248. Uh, personally, I don't have a lot of experience with this one. Um, it is a bit of a newer wheel, so uh, I would recommend just doing your research on that one. But it does work on all three platforms. And I do believe it was supposed to replace the T150, which I think it has, because I don't see the T150 on here anywhere. So yeah, I, I would recommend, uh, you know, something like this. Force feedback is very important when it comes to the F1 games. You want to have a wheel with force feedback or else you're pretty much playing with a controller just in a different format. And in honesty, uh, uh, an even worse format because you actually do get some some feedback coming from your controllers. So yeah, this is probably Thrustmaster's like base one. And then you have the T300 RS, which is my personal recommendation for you guys. I feel like in terms of quality to price, it's probably one of the best bang for your bucks that you're going to get. Um, starting out when it comes to any sort of wheel, Logitech, Thrustmaster, Fanatec, anything like that. Um, the only thing that I say with the Thrustmaster T300 RS is the original pedals. I believe it comes with the two pedal set. Wouldn't recommend those. Um, there is the T3 PMs. Those are the new plastic pedals that they've got from Thrustmaster. Those I would highly recommend, uh, which you can see right here. They are pretty much modeled after the load cell pedals, which would be my next recommendations. And um, yeah, these ones are a fantastic pedal set to really start out with and get your feet wet when it comes to that. And plus with the way that they're designed as well, it will really help you practice trail breaking and actually getting quicker and building up muscle memory. You do have the normal T3PA pedals. Wouldn't recommend these because one, they are in my opinion, a lot worse than the new ones. And two, they're actually for some reason more expensive on Thrustmaster's website. Bit weird there considering these are actually the older pedals. These are the pedals that I personally started out with. They're good, but not as good to start out with as these, I think. Um, but then you have the load cell pedals, which are somewhere on here. They're right here, the load cell pedals. These are the pedals that I probably recommend the most, but as you can see, when you're pairing it with the T300 RS, that moves this wheel from a 300 pound wheel to a 500 pound wheel. So a bit of a sticky situation there. However, I would still recommend this sort of bundle of anything because the pedals are the most important when it comes to either the wheelbase or the pedals because that's where you're gonna gain most of the pace. That's where you learn throttle control, braking, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I would recommend the load cells, but for now, probably best to get the T3 PMs, which obviously do bring up the cost to about 400 pounds, I think roughly something like that. Uh, but I do feel that that's a lot better money spent than getting the Logitech because the pedals on the Logitech, a lot of people do complain about them. However, if you have a little bit more money to spend, then there is a few different options you can go with here. Now, if you want the best wheelbase possible, 
then obviously you're going to go with the TGT2. This is um, pretty much Thrustmaster's new flagship. And you compare that with the Formula Ferrari SF1000. This was Ferrari's uh, 2020, I believe, or 2021 wheel that they've made a replica of. This is a pretty good wheel. I've not used it myself, but I've seen and spoke to people who have used it. And honestly, they are amazed by it. So yeah, in terms of absolute peak from Thrustmaster on PlayStation, this is what you're going to be looking at. So TGT2 paired with the Formula 1 steering wheel and the load cell pedals. That's probably the best you can get. Um, you can get the TGT uh, deal, which comes with, um, I believe, the T3PMs. And then it comes with this wheelbase as well. For 700 quid, this combined with this, you're already looking at about 800 quid. So it's quite expensive. So when it comes to that, that's where I'd say maybe you want to move to Fanatec instead of going with Thrustmaster just because you'll be moving over to direct drive. Uh, but that, yeah, that's pretty much Thrust Thrustmaster's flagship. Um, but what I would recommend from Thrustmaster if you want, you know, the best bang for your buck is maybe getting the open wheel add-on, which is what I personally use, which should be somewhere around here. Ah, here it is. So yeah, what I personally recommend for the best bang for your buck, you probably want to go with the TM open wheel add-on, combine that with the T300 racing, uh, racing wheel servo base, and then getting the... Uh, the TLCM pedals. That's the exact setup that I use and I have been using for the past two years roughly. And as I was saying, once you get to like the 800 pound range from Thrustmaster, that's maybe at the point where you'd wanna think about getting a Fanatec instead, just because Thrustmasters don't currently offer any direct drive wheels, whereas Fanatec do, and you can get uh, on PlayStation, you can get the Gran Turismo DD Pro 8 Newton meter, uh, for around 850 euros or you can get the uh, the DD Pro 5 new meters for around 700 you can see they're sold out right now so a bit harder to get but if you can get them highly recommend that because direct drives are a lot better than the normal wheelbases that you'll see the main difference being between the two that direct drive is connected to the motor directly it gives you smoother and it gives you quicker response with your force feedback whereas with Thrustmaster they use something called a belt system where they have a smaller motor and then they use a belt to sort of supplement the strength so yeah definitely direct drive is the best way to go if you can afford it however if you can't afford it then for playstation i highly recommend going with the setup that i went with which is pretty much what i use for my videos now when it comes to the xbox side of things you're pretty much gonna want to choose the exact same thing however there is a little bit of a difference here you can actually get the tsxw servo base which is a good medium between the servo base which is the one i use and the tgt2 that is for the playstation as well this is definitely a good medium it's more refined more powerful than the tx however it's a lot cheaper than the tgt so highly recommend if you're on xbox or pc and you want to stick with Thrustmaster. this is probably the wheelbase to go with actually still pairing it with the load cell pedals as you're going to want to get the load pedals load cell pedals if you can afford it due to the fact that they're the best pedals that you can buy from Thrustmaster. And then you can you can still pair that with, uh, if we go back here to the TM open wheel, as you can see, the TM open wheel is pretty much compatible with every single console, Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. They also have the TSXW Racer Sparkle sort of bundle here. The reason why I would rather you get the server wheelbase and then get the wheel yourself is so that you can pair it with the load cell pedals because this deal doesn't actually come with the load cell pedals. I'm not actually sure if it comes with any pedals. I think it does, but don't hold me to that. Okay, so we've just done some research and yeah, it does come with pedals, but as you can see, it comes with the T3PA pedals, which are pretty much the pedals I told you not to get because those are the worst out of the two plastic pedals that Thrustmaster offer. I do wish that they would up this, update this bundle just so that they can use the newer plastic ones. I don't know why they sell that separately and don't add it to this bundle but either way you can see it is out of stock right now but obviously if you follow if you, you know, i don't know if you can subscribe to something you'll be able to find out when it's available personally i'd recommend just getting the wheelbase if you can um getting the tm open wheel add-on or the ferrari one if you can spend that extra money and then pairing that with the low cell brake pedals that's probably going to be your best bet if you're on xbox and then if you want to get a Fanatec setup when it comes to Xbox, you can, as you can see, you can get the Gran Turismo bundles. However, they say Xbox ready. What does that actually mean? Well, what it means is it can be used with Xbox if you pair it with an Xbox compatible wheel. 
So right now, this is PlayStation due to the fact that it's Gran Turismo. It's got the Gran Turismo wheel there. This is not going to work on, on Xbox. You would want to pair it with the McLaren GT3 or something like that. That does mean spending a bit extra money, which is why I'd probably recommend maybe if it's not sold out at the time of you purchasing, maybe going with the F1 Esports bundle where you get the F1 Esports wheel, you get the load cell brakes and you get the CSL DD. But yeah, pretty much when it comes to actual bundles from Fanatec, this is probably the only one that you can get um, right off the bat and it will work. Just recommend maybe just getting the actual wheelbase separately and then buying like the McLaren GT3 rim and then you can get the new pedals as well and sort of buy it that way. So it's a bit easier on you, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all you can really get from Fanatec without moving to, you know, the full direct drive one and the direct drive two. Uh, but as you can see, they do have uh, two sort of bundles here. They, they have the Xbox bundle and they have the PlayStation bundle when it comes to F1 specifically for the Xbox and for PlayStation. And one thing I did forget to mention guys is when it comes to direct drive wheels, as of right now and to my knowledge, Fanatec are the only company that offer direct drive wheels for console. And then lastly, you have PC and PC is pretty much free reign. Every single wheel that you can imagine can be used on PC. So you've pretty much got anything, anything you want from any company you could probably get. And uh, you've got the Fanatec stuff, you've got the Thrustmaster stuff that I've already shown you. You can always go with those sort of bundles or the sort of packages. You've also got another wheel-based company that's quite new compared to the other ones, I do believe, where um, I can recommend getting it if you're on PC. This is the R9 wheelbase by Moza. This is probably the best uh, sort of direct drive wheel you can get in terms of answering to Fanatec CSLDD. Uh, roughly about the same price. I do believe this is a little bit more expensive. However, it does come with a better looking wheel, in my opinion, uh, better looking pedals, and the fact that it comes with an extra newton meter of torque uh, compared to the CSLDD. The CSLDD being eight newton meters with the boost kit, this being nine newton meters by default. Now, when it comes to Moza's stuff, Moza's stuff is a lot more expensive than Thrustmaster and Logitech, and in some cases, even Fanatec. So, yeah, you're going to need quite a lot of a budget in order to go with Moza. You can see that this wheel looks absolutely stunning. But when you look at the price of this wheel, that's where things start to become a little bit uh, iffy. I do believe this wheel is about 500 US dollars. And then combine that with the wheelbase, looking at around about a thousand. And that's even before you've bought the pedals. So, yeah, um, this is probably for people who do have a little bit more of a budget to spend. So if you're on PC and you don't really have that much of a budget budget to spend, you can go with the T24-8 from Thrustmaster. You can go with the Logitech if you so choose to, or you can go with one of the bundles that I've mentioned. For example, the open wheel and the servo base compared with the load cell pedals, or you can get the, the plastic pedals if you don't have enough for the load cell. Um, I would probably recommend maybe compromising your wheelbase a little bit so that you can get better pedals. So it's completely up to you, of course. Um, but yeah, in terms of small budget, medium budget and high budget, that's the options that you really have in terms of F1 right now. Other than that, you probably need to go, you know, a lot more expensive. This is probably, you know, roughly about the best bang for your buck stuff that you're going to get for F1 22. So yeah, this video wasn't planned. So I hope that you guys were able to learn something. I hope I wasn't too incoherent uh, with this video, but I hope that you did enjoy it. I hope you learned something. I hope that you end up getting the wheel of your choice if you did like this video if you did learn something from it make sure to smash the like button make sure to let me know in the comment section what sort of wheel and pedal pa uh, pairing are you going to be getting for f122 and i'll catch you guys in my next video